Well, I have been wanting to uh, preach a series on truth, and I'll tell you why this came to us. It was because uh, we just felt like now, with what's happening in the world and what's happening in society right now, that, that we just need to spend some time talking about it, our understanding of the truth. And so that's what we're going to do for the next uh, few weeks as we share together. There is uh, the, the, the idea of what is truth is not a new question. It's been around for a long time. In fact, uh, it was actually asked in the Bible. Some of you will remember this story in the Bible. It was when uh, Jesus appeared before Pilate. Do you remember this? After he had been arrested and had been beaten severely, almost to the point of death, he goes before Pilate because Pilate is the only one who supposedly has authority to put people to death. The Jewish leaders could not do that. It would be a violation of their religion. So they took him to Pilate so that Pilate would condemn him and have him crucify. And so there's this moment when he stands in front of Pilate and they have this conversation about truth. Are you a king or are you not a king? That's what they're saying you are. And so I want to read that to you this morning. It comes from John chapter 18, just a couple of verses starting with verse 37. Pilate now is asking this question. Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus responded, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. What is truth? Pilate asked. Then he went out again to the people and told them he is not guilty of any crime. I mean, Pilate asked this question, what is truth? And I don't know whether you have said this, but I guarantee if you haven't said it, you've heard it said probably in the last six to eight months. I don't know what to believe anymore. Have you found yourself saying that? I mean, you know, do masks work? Do these things really work? At first they told us masks didn't work, and then they told us masks do work. We believe they do. That's why we're wearing them now. You know, can children spread the COVID-19, or is this just something adults do? Should we send them back to school? Do we go back to live classes in school? Can we have in-person worship? Some say yes, some say no. Can we sing? I mean, all of these things that people are saying out there, and, and we're asking the question, what's the truth? What do we believe? I just don't know what to believe anymore. And we see it in politics. We see it in government. We see it in social media. We see it in the news. This, all, all this idea of fake news, Russian interference with this, that, and the other. I mean, it, it's just everywhere. What are we to believe? What are we to believe? And here's what else we know. It spills over into matters of faith as well. It's just got to, as we begin to question what's truth in society, it's going to naturally spill over into our faith. What is truth? I saw this uh, post that uh, someone uh, shared online recently. And it's someone who's, who's clamoring for truth. Let, read this along with me. Look what it says. This person wrote this. I don't know what to believe anymore. I'm scared terrified even. Please, please help me. I want to believe in the truth and find an objectively true belief system. The more I research, the more contradictions seem to appear, and the more I shift towards a more atheistic, atheistic perspective. But I continue to hear, but I continue to fear that I am a fool for doing so, and I will burn in an eternal hell for all my actions. I am honestly terrified. You know, uh, since the coronavirus uh, arrived in the United States, uh, people have been searching Google with very interesting questions. And so I went to uh, their website to see what the top searches were since the coronavirus hit. You know what they were? Is God real? Am I going to hell? Is Jesus real? Prayer? Does prayer work? I mean, these are the searches that, that rise to the top over and over and over again since the coronavirus came. And, and they even uh, one of the largest searches was, how do, how do I go to church online? What can I do to find a church online? And, and you've got to ask the question, because there's this dramatic increase in searches about spiritual matters. You've got to ask the question, what are they really searching for? 
The answer's got to be truth. They're looking for truth. Are these things true? Can I depend on these things? Is it true? Because truth has been under attack. I don't know whether you've realized this or not. It's been under attack for years. And we're seeing the result of that attack even now. Uh, Dr. Michelle Gelfin had this quote about the demise of truth. Listen to what she says. She says, since World War II, we have also been influenced by existentialism, which basically says because we exist, we get to choose what we want to do. That God doesn't exist, we do, and therefore we get to set the rules for how we live. So we've been influenced by that, but also postmodern relativism. And it just means that the truth is relative to your circumstances. She goes on to say, as a result, we are a post-truth culture in which truth and meaning are found in our personal experience. You see that? My truth is not your truth and vice versa. That's what we see in that online post that I read just a few moments ago with that person trying to understand what to believe. But it has recently been confirmed by a Barna Barna survey. It's a 2020 this year survey. And it asks all kinds of questions about what Christians and non Christians believe about the truth. Look at the results of this survey. Here's what it shows Of the adults that were polled, 58% say there is no absolute truth. 58% would say that. So that means that 58% of those people surveyed, there were adults, said there's no absolute truth. Instead, they say it's up to the individual to decide. What is true or moral? Isn't that interesting? Now, let me just suggest this to you because this survey also reveals what teenagers think about absolute truth. So I'm just going to throw it out there. What do you think the percentage was for teenagers who say that uh, there is no absolute truth? What do you think? Throw it out there. 85, 83%. 83%. Which means there's, once you, once you look at some who say, I don't know whether that's true or not, there's only 6% of teenagers who say that moral truth is absolute. Isn't that interesting? Well, here's what else this survey revealed. It revealed, when they asked Christians, what do you Christians believe about absolute truth? Here's what it revealed. Only 43% of those who identify as born-again Christians still embrace absolute truth. Here's what that means. 57% say there's no absolute truth. That's Christians, which is just 1% different from what the overall adults who were surveyed said. I mean, it's just mind-boggling that that's the kind of belief system that people have out there. So, so then the survey goes on to ask, it says, so what are, what are Americans looking, uh, for, where are they looking for truth? And here's what the survey res- reveals. Only 42% of the adults surveyed said that they think God is the basis of truth. Isn't that interesting? Only 42%. And, and, and here's what the others claim uh, is the source of truth. One was inner certainty, just this feeling of something inside. Another, another set said it was scientific proof, whatever the science proves, that's what truth is. And another one said it's just the public consensus, whatever the public says, whatever they feel at the time should be the truth becomes the truth. By far, the most common basis for moral decision-making, according to the survey, was doing whatever feels right and comfortable in the situation. And so George Barner, one of the descendants of the Barners who started this whole Barner survey group, here's what he said. He said, this is where we are in America today. Only half of Americans now believe in an all-knowing, all-powerful, loving, and forgiving God And less than half believe the Bible is completely true and relevant to modern life. He he said in the article I was reading, he said it's a seismic shift in the American belief. And it's true. It is. And it's happening in churches too. Here's how I know. A few years ago I was preaching at one of the churches I was serving. And I was preaching the text about uh, the angel appearing to, to Mary And telling her that she was going to give birth to the Messiah. You know that story, of course, from Luke. And so I preached preached a sermon. And uh, the next day I go into my office. And one of my staff members calls me into his office. And I go into his office. And he said, uh, he said, he said, Jimmy, 
you, you're preaching this stuff like it's the truth. And I, and I, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't, did, what did you say? He said, he said you're, you're preaching. When you preach about angels and, and virgin birth and, and Mary giving birth to the Messiah, you're, you're, you're preaching it like it's true. And I said, that's because it is true. I'm not going to preach anything else except for what's true. I mean, here's a person who was on my staff serving in a church who doesn't believe that this is truth. It's spilling over into all places uh, in, in our society today. So, so here's, here's where I want to I start today. The truth is important. It's really important, and it matters. And here's, I want to give you just two thoughts today on why truth really matters. Here's the first one. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Without truth, you and I have no hope. If there is no truth in what Jesus said and what the Bible says and what God inspired these writers to write, if there's no truth in it, then you and I really have no hope. And so I think about it like this. Maybe this has been your experience. It's been my experience in life. We, we live on this spectrum. I, I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way. I hadn't really thought about it this way, but I see that it's true. We live on this spectrum from 1 to 10. And, and over on the scale of 1 is the the... the that's where uncertainty and despair reside. But over on the 10, that's where optimism and hope are. And, and so it's like we live on this scale, and depending on where we are in our faith, and a lot of times depending on where we are in our circumstances, that little meter jumps over sometimes closer to the 10 with optimism and hope, and at other times it falls over to the other side, which is where uncertainty and despair live. And we all find ourselves on that scale at some point. And a lot of times it's bouncing around. And I don't think bouncing around is a good place to live. So without truth, here's what we know. Without truth, we have no choice but to slide towards that uncertainty and despair end of this spectrum. Which means that yesterday, when in our sanctuary, we had one of the most holy, uplifting uh, funeral services for our own Mr. Lowe Wilson and his precious wife, Annie Ruth, what, what it means is if we live on the, the scale of uncertainty and despair closer to that end, it means that we wasted our time yesterday in the sanctuary celebrating their lives. But with truth, if truth is true, then we have all the hope we ever need. The psalmist wrote it this way. David wrote in Psalm 25. Look at this one. He says this. He says crying out to the Lord, lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. That's who you are, Lord. All day long, I put my hope in you. And so truth and hope go together. Uh, and, and when we have truth, we have hope. But here's the thing. It's not just some hope. It's not just wishful thinking. It's just not like, well, I hope against hope that I might be able to live forever eternally with Christ. It's, it's not some hope. In fact, Paul, when he writes to the Colossians, these early Christians in Colossians chapter 1, look what he says about this hope. Watch what he says. For we have heard of your faith, talking about these new Christians, your faith in Jesus Christ and your love for all God's people, which come from your confident hope. You see that? It's a confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You have had this expectation ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. It's not wishful thinking. It is a confident expectation that what God has promised is true and it will happen. So when we believe the truth, that's when our, our meter moves over there towards the 10, towards optimism with life and towards hope. And without that, we have no hope. Now, here's, here's the second one. Without truth, you and I have no standard to live by. And this, this, is, this is really, really important. If you go back to the survey and understand what uh, those results were showing, this is very, very true. We have no standard to live by. It's just whatever you want to do, whatever you feel comfortable doing. If there is no truth, as many of these people apparently surveyed believe, if there is no absolute truth, then what is the standard that they're living by? I mean, what's the standard for them? 
What, what are the values and morals and ethics that they're living by if there is no truth, no absolute truth, no absolute right and wrong? Because here's, here's the reality. We have to base our lives on something. And the something that we have to base our lives on has to be true. It's got to be. Otherwise, we're just wishing against wishing. But if there's no standard, then here's what we get to do. And this is why some people choose to believe this. We get to do what we want to do. You know, society will say it like this. Have you heard this saying before? It says, well, you just do you. Have you heard that? You, you just do you. I mean, you know, you get to be you. You get to decide what you want to do. You just do you. That's just you. And while it may not be okay for me to do that, hey, listen, you just be you. And you just go right ahead. And that's what we hear a lot in society today. And here's the reality of that. If we follow that line of thinking, then here's what happens. Truth erodes. And as truth erodes, so goes society. Until ultimately, it's going to crash and burn. I mean, history, history teaches us that truth. We know it's true because just look at history and what's happened in the past. And where truth is eroding, here's what happens. We're just tossed about in the wind. Whatever the current thinking is, whoever says it the loudest, we ju we're just tossed back and forth. And we end up adding our voice to those who say, I just don't know what to believe anymore. I just don't know what to believe. I really want to believe that there's some truth out there, but what is truth? What is truth? And even in that statement, just in that little statement alone, there's this, you, you can sense there's this desire for something deep inside, from something deep inside that says there has to be a standard. There has to be an absolute right and wrong. Otherwise, life just doesn't make sense if that's the way it is. Paul and other writers in the Bible believed with all of their being that the answer to this is faith in Jesus Christ, which anchors us in truth. Here's what he said about the early Christians at Ephesus, one of the churches uh, that he helped start. He's talking about them growing in their faith and continuing to grow. And here's what he says. As you do that, we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced by people when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like the truth. I mean, one of the things is hardest for us to understand is a half lie I mean a half truth it's like there's some truth to this statement some truth to this idea but once you follow it down its logical route you find out it, it doesn't produce what you thought it would produce it's a half truth it's really a lie and so it's really important today for us to understand what anchors us in the truth because others are searching as we see from the google searches they're searching and one has to, be, has to wonder what they're being told by pastors, by peers, by mentors, by parents, grandparents, and others. What are they being told? Dr. Uh, Tracy Munsell is the executive director of this Barna group that does all these uh, surveys. Listen to what she said after looking at the results of the 2020 survey. She says, we're seeing an untethered generation Young people completely adrift with no foundation in God, biblical truth, or standards of morality, the very things that enabled generations before them to live well and flourish. Those who still recognize the truth of God and His standards, hopefully that's us, have a responsibility to share these with the next generation, or they will be lost to this next generation and maybe to our nation forever. That's a dire warning, which is true. So Pilate stands with Jesus, and he asks this question, very profound. I'm not so sure he meant it in a profound way. I think he probably meant it in sarcasm, like what is truth? Who cares what truth is? What is truth anyway? Probably is the way he said it. But Jesus, standing there in front of him, He's the truth. He's the truth. In fact, he says in John 14, 6, he says, it says that Jesus told him, the one who asked it, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Either what he said is true 
or he's a liar. He also said in the passage we saw today, he said this to Pilate, Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth, Jesus Christ, recognize that what I say is true. So here's the truth. Jesus is the truth. And the Word of God, Jesus Christ Himself, the Holy Scripture is the truth. The Bible tells the truth. If you want to discover the truth, you've got to read it and study it. And then when you do, here's what happens. It begins to change who you are, which means that the truth of it begins to speak to us and we respond to the truth we read in there. I was uh, watching a video of a junior in high school, a young lady, and she had been around the church most of her life, but she never really bought into it. And so she started living this lifestyle of, you can imagine, doing all kinds of things that ultimately she was ashamed of until one day she began to read the Bible. I want you to hear the way she describes her life and how it changed. Listen to what she said. She said, I wanted to get drunk. I wanted to smoke. I wanted to be physical with guys because I wanted the attention. I wanted to feel valued, and I wanted to feel loved. But I was full of guilt and shame. A Christian friend that I looked up to friended me, and she pointed me to the Bible. When I started to read the Bible, everything changed, and I discovered that Jesus is so much greater than what you're going through. I mean, she discovered this truth by reading the Bible by herself because it's true. Here's what she needed to know as true. She needed to know that God loved her, that God wasn't mad with her, that he wanted the best for her, that he was with her. She needed to know that truth. And she needed to face that truth too. So truth is also this. Almighty God, God himself is truth. He is the God of truth. He is the same from the beginning to the end. He never changes. His promises are always kept. He is truth. And Jesus, when he spoke, he spoke the truth. There is no other truth than that. What the Father said through the Bible, his word is true. Jesus told the truth when he talked about sin and hell and resurrection and salvation and eternal life and redemption. All of those things that he spoke about, he spoke the truth. He told the truth about the love of the Father, that he is with us and that he is for us. And that there is nothing under earth or above it that will ever separate us from the love of the Father that is in Christ Jesus. He spoke the truth about what would happen and it happened. And he told us he's coming back, and it will happen. He spoke the truth. It's not fake news. It's not false truth. It's not relative truth or some truth. It is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And we need truth now. We need truth in our country right now. We need truth with us to sustain us in our time of need. I needed it when my sister was killed in the car wreck by the drunk driver that crossed the center line. And, and I, I, I've told you about that, but I don't know that I've shared this, this truth that came to me when I was going through that as a just a graduated from the University of Georgia and was about to start law school. And I remember the aftermath of what happened when that tragedy occurred in our life. And, and I came to this this conclusion, and I shared it with others. And, and here's what I said. I remember it. I said, there has to be a God. There has to be a God. When I, when I watched everything that happened and what God did through it after my sister's death, even though I thought I believed it, now I knew there has to be a God. It is true. All this stuff I'd been reading and hearing as a child, as a teenager, all of it was true. And then that truth was reaffirmed in me at my father's death and at my mother's death. It's true. It's true. Jesus is our only hope. He's the standard that we live by. And, and here's what I discovered when I finally understood the truth. It was freeing for me. It was freeing for me. I no longer had to wonder what it was. 
which is exactly what Jesus said, didn't he? He said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. He didn't say you're going to know a truth. He didn't say you're going to know some truth or any truth. He said the truth because he's the embodiment of the truth. And so when Pilate asked him, what's the truth? Pilate chose to walk away from it. He didn't face the truth. And it was standing right there in front of him. And so so here's my question to us today. Are, are Are we like Pilate when the truth is standing right in front of us and it's, it, it, we, we, we fail to see it. Is that who we are? And we just turn and go the other way and we're tossed to and fro as the wind blows depending on what society says is truth or what feels right? Or are we like those that Paul mentioned in Ephesians? Are we like them who know the truth and are not tossed to and fro in a world that claims that there is no truth? And then here's, here's the bigger question. Are we, are you and I, are we willing to face the truth of what he says? Because until we do, truth won't matter to us. And so I wonder where we are on that scale from 1 to 10. I want to give you some ideas as we, in the next two weeks, we're going we're gonna to dig in a little bit deeper into the truth. But here's some ideas, next steps for this week. Here's the first one. I will believe that Jesus is the truth. Maybe you're like me, sort of believed it, kind of believed it, wished it were true at times. You know, when, when, when I came to that reality that God does exist, He has to be real, I, I wasn't wishful thinking and hoping something good might happen and make me feel better about myself and what I was going through. I needed to know it was true then. And maybe that's where you are. I will believe that Jesus is the truth. And the next one, I will explore for myself whether Jesus, maybe you're not there yet. Just say, I want to explore it. I want to dig deeper. I want to find out whether he's true or not. Or the next one, I will believe that the Bible speaks the truth and I'm going to read it as truth, not just as some, you know, historical document. I'm going to read it as truth. And then the last one is, I wholeheartedly believe with all my being that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and my only hope. That's the most important one because it's true. Let's pray if we could. Father, thank you that there is truth in this world. And that truth is not dependent upon what the world says. It's not dependent upon what some wise preacher says. It's dependent upon one source and one source only, and that's you. You are truth. And you sent your truth, the word of truth, to be with us so that we might know and see and physically understand and be able to mentally take in the truth. And so thank you for that. Father, if there's someone within the sound of our voices today that hasn't made that decision to believe the truth, God, would you help them do that today? Just simply acknowledge it. I'm tired of wondering what's true. Today, Jesus, I believe you're the truth. And I'm going to put my faith in you. For there is no other truth than Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. If you'll stand and sing with us as we close out this morning.